Hello and welcome to HID All Access, a podcast focusing on physical access control systems. What are the trends, what are the drivers, and what are the benefits? Today we are discussing credentials and communication protocols. My expert advisors, as usual, are Sanjit Barden, Phil Coppola, and Jason Shim. So as an end user, I've made my choice to go mobile. We're talking about the different drivers, the benefits, you know, plastic versus mobile. I've committed to make that decision, but I think there's an element of confusion out there. What happens when I present my phone to a card reader on the wall? What happens? Can you elaborate on that, Phil? So going back to what Sanjit said earlier about the perceived complexity of moving from plastic to mobile, there are a couple of different methodologies that you can use to deploy a mobile credential. One being an app-based credential that can communicate uh, over Bluetooth, or a wallet-based credential where the credential actually lives inside of the wallet, inside the secure element of the wallet. From a user experience perspective, Bluetooth enables outcomes like extended read range, um, whereas a wallet-based experience enables things like self-service provisioning. Right, So depending on the size of your organization or what your outcomes are, you can count on us to be able to provide you with all this sort of information that will enable you to make a better decision. When we talk about modalities, I think Jason can talk about the, the different ways that the uh, credentials actually communicate out of the phone. Yeah, so you're talking about the experience of the user. Now, the communication between the phone and the reader basically breaks into two. One is your Bluetooth and one is the NFC. An easy way to understand this is kind of just use an example of like when you're watching TV at home. You could either have like a dish, a direct TV or satellite dish type thing. That's a communication from the satellite to your home. You're getting that information. It's it's good. It works. Or you're having like a traditional cable company or a fiber company that's running a cable out to your house. It's the same kind of concept where Bluetooth is going a communication protocol between the phone and the reader, and so is NFC. Both have been around for a very long time. Bluetooth came around, I think, in the 1990s, was the original spec was written out. And NFC is what we're using every day with uh, our, our smart cards. It's also what we're using when we go and pay with our, uh, with our credit cards by just doing the tap and go. So both of them are just communication protocols. So I think there's some maybe misunderstandings in the industry that I think, Sanjit, you wanted to address. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's funny that there are so many misunderstandings in the industry. There's this one thing that I'd really like to point out around um, it being a Bluetooth credential. Folks, there's <laughs> nothing called a Bluetooth credential. Bluetooth is a modality, just like NFC is a modality, and UWB is going to be a modality very soon in the world of access. But the fact that s- some folks in the industry are calling it well, you either have a wallet credential or a Bluetooth BLE credential. That's that's incorrect. That's a myth that just needs to be debunked immediately. Um, credentials are in your um, application or in the wallet. Um, for example, on a platform like Android, you can use um, your app-based solutions both via BLE and or NFC. So... It, there is nothing called a BLE credential. It depends on the uh, it depends on the software that your uh, device uses. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, this this myth is debunked. So when we talk about the experience, the communication protocols, the security of what we're doing is what you're talking about. So you've got the CIOS credential, and whether the experience is an app or a wallet, or it's communicated over Bluetooth or NFC, the the security is in the CIOS credential itself, and that's being transferred. From yeah. the phone to the device. I mean, CIOS has been uh, one of the one of the industry's favorite credentials, uh, so to speak. Especially with our end users, they love this. They love the product primarily because of its security features, which is the same credential that's being uh, used in a mobile uh, solution today from uh, HID. So, uh, with of course the addition of the security elements that the phone brings in or the device that. Uh, the secure element security features as well as the security features that CIOS brings in makes it makes it a bulletproof solution. Looking back on the security, it's, it's a point I think that's often overlooked. We talk about the, the technology and the encryptions and we focus on that a lot. But there's also the human element, right, of security and around how mobile access uh, works. Phil, you're often interacting with end users around this. So, you know, card security versus mobile security. What are some of the, the misconceptions we can debunk here today as well? Yeah, it's a great question. So... 
a lot of the pushback that I get from end users that are considering a, a move from plastic to mobile is, what about my ID badge, right? And the, uh, the concern sort of around that, because this is something that in the security industry we've done for years and years and years. We recently hosted an event uh, where we brought a number of large enterprise end users together, and the overwhelming consensus in the room was photo ID badges are not secure, right? They can be easily replicated, they can be easily duplicated, and then when we put that uh, person's credential on that same photo ID badge and it does get lost, stolen, or misplaced, we open ourselves up to vulnerability. Whereas the overwhelming consensus, again, from the folks in this room was when we move to a mobile credential, there are all sorts of ways that we can deactivate that card or that pass on a user-by-user -user basis. So they don't even have to call our office to let us know that they lost the phone. If they lost the phone, they're going to take care of that on their own. So what about the scenario I'm out Friday night having a few drinks with friends? You know, there's a scenario that I lose my card, right? And I may or may not notice that straight away. But there's also the alternative scenario where I lose my mobile phone. I want to raise that because I think it's a really important part. You know, the security access to my building is still within my phone. Now I lose that phone, what am I going to do? Well, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'll tell you, so I, I am an iPhone user, disclaimer, disclaimer, but the, the same is true on, on uh, Android devices as well. I'm going to go to iCloud and I'm going to try to locate my phone. If I can see it's still in the bar, I'm going to go to the bar the next morning and I'm going to go grab it. Or... I'm going to mark that phone as lost or stolen. And in that instance, it's going to go into a mode that will no longer transmit not just my card, but all of my credit cards, all of my financial instruments that are already on the phone, those are all going to be deactivated at the same time. So again, utilizing that, the, the fact that the tech giants, the Apples, the Googles, the Samsungs of the world have trained us all on what the best practice is when you do lose your phone means that they don't have to think, oh, I have to deactivate my access control pass. They just deactivate their phone and the rest is history. Now, on the flip side of that, if I, if I went on vacation and I dropped my phone in the ocean, well, there's no finding it at that point. I'm going to the Apple store myself and I'm provisioning myself a new phone. And when I do that, if I do have employee badge and Apple wallet, I go to my app, I put my pass in my phone and I'm done. There's no calling to the office. It just automatically happens. And that pass is provisioned in every single system that I should have access to without ever having to call anybody to ask for a pass. I find it interesting as someone who probably identifies as a millennial that the example that you gave was you didn't realize your phone was missing till you got home. If you're at the bar, you still have to pay the tab. That's true. With your wireless payment through your phone, yep. your mobile device. You still have to call an Uber or a Lyft to get home yep. through your phone. Yep. When you get home, you still have to unlock your, your garage door. You still have to unlock your house door. All that's with your mobile phone. It's immediate. Like mm -hmm. You know when your phone's gone immediately. And if it is gone and you have your friend's phone, you try to find your phone, and it's not in the area, you're immediately shutting that thing down. Absolutely. You're immediately running over to the iPhone store, grabbing a new one, and you're back up and running, as you said. Everything's provisioned right back in your new phone. You're off and running. You're at work the next day. Nobody knows the difference. Yep. Except security will get a notification saying, hey, the old phone was decommissioned or deprovisioned, and the new phone is provisioned. Just wanted to let you know that there's a new phone on the system, but there's no change in the credentialing because... There's no change in who the user was, the credential transferred to the new phone. Yes, you're right. I'm probably never leaving that bar without my phone, except I rely on this so much now. And I pay with my watch. I use my watch to get in and out of facilities. So I may not necessarily notice where my phone is. It should be in my pocket, but if it's not, it's not. But when I walk away from my phone, my watch goes off and says, hey, you left your phone. Mm -hmm. Your phone's gone. True. Right? So... Can we say the same with a plastic card? Absolutely not. No. Unless you're going to put an air tag on your plastic card, which is no one's ever going to do this. <laughs> you guys spoke about the bar and you know losing your phone and pr possibly losing your credential. But how often does that happen, number one? You lose your plastic credential, you go and report it to your security. The security pulls out a new plastic badge and issues you that. And that starts building up to your cost. Now start thinking about certain industries, hospitality. I'll tell you what, I, I, eight out of 10 times, I don't return the card <laughs> that, I've, that I've badged into my room back to the reception desk. I've 
it's either it's there are probably five Hilton or Marriott cards lying in my bag from previous trips. And those five cards, multiply that by the number of uh, dollars per card, multiply that by an average number of customer like me. Correct. So my hotel room costs are going up because you keep taking those plastic <laughs> keys. Well, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> Unless they go mobile. Thanks to our expert advisors, Sanjit Barden, Phil Coppola, and Jason Schimpf. If you'd like to get one of our experts to advise you on your physical access control system, please visit hidglobal.com. We'd be happy to give you a no-obligations consultation to help you on the road to modernizing your access control. I'm Troy Johnston, and this has been the HID All Access Podcast.